let me ask you something. You have enemies, right? Yes. What if you were able to see their demons? Right when your enemies are talking crazy to you, right when your enemies are backstabbing you, right when your enemies are trying to backstab or harm you in some type of way, if you were to see the demons controlling, influencing them, how would you feel? Would you want to seek vengeance upon them? That would not be your first thought. Would you try to, or would you want to slash their tires, break their windows, fight them, so on and so on? No, because you are seeing the demons that are controlling them. So what are you going to focus on? You are going to focus on the demons, focus on how to get rid of those demons, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 16. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Okay. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So what is that saying there? We can either serve Satan or God. You believe that you may be able to serve yourself by being self-centered you are obtaining a quality that Satan wants you to have. So by doing that, ultimately, you are serving Satan. Well, I don't think so, Kevin. You are wrong. Okay, whatever. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, so what does it mean, whether of sin unto death? You may say, well, we all are going to die. Yes, that is true. That is so true. But usually when the Bible speaks about death, yes, it is speaking about dying as well. But in some places, death is referred to people who are in sin, being cursed because of their disobedience to God, and ultimately going to hell. So death pretty much has a negative connotation to it. When you are following God's rules and regulations, yes, you may die, but It is not considered as the same thing as, as, as death. It is not considered the same thing because I don't want to confuse anyone. When you are following God's rules and regulations, that is considered life. And you may say, well, the person that is in sin, they are living now. So why isn't that considered life? When you are in sin, choosing to disobey God, there is no life, spiritual life, out of God. So when you are choosing to sin, 
not following God's rules and regulations, that is considered death. Then, while you are being cursed, and if you still choose to not stop sinning, you are going to hell. And you won't be able to die then. But it is considered death when you choose to not obey God. When you choose to obey God, that is considered life. Then you will receive eternal life once you die and go to heaven. So to make this easy to understand, whether you are serving God or not, we all are going to have to die pretty much. But when you are living in sin, that is considered death. When you are obeying God, that is considered life. Make sense? Let's go to John 11 and 26, and you are going to see what I am trying to say. Okay. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So Jesus Christ is saying, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now, we all know that if you are a human, one day you are going to have to die. But it is not talking about death in that type of way. When you choose to follow God, follow his rules and regulations, that is considered life. Even when you, even when this earth suit dies, your spirit never dies. So when you choose to obey God, that is considered life. Then when you die as an obedient servant, you are going to receive eternal life. Oops. When you go to hell, if you go to hell, you won't be able to die, but your separation from God, whether on earth or in hell, that is considered death. Because there is no life out of God. So when you choose to live outside of God, there is no life. I pray that makes sense there. So... To get back to what I was speaking of. So as you can see here, from what I was speaking of, we know that people who choose to not follow God's rules and regulations, we know that they are being controlled, being influenced by demons, right? So... Would you react the same way that you react now in a very foolish way if you were to see the demons? No, you would do warfare against the demons. You would not bother with that human because you know that human or humans are being used by those demons, right? So while I am saying this, what should you be doing now against those demons that are controlling your enemies? You should be praying. You may even have to fast. Why would you beat up a puppet? Why would you destroy a puppet when the puppeteer can go to another puppet and continue to mess with you? Wouldn't it make 
logical sense to deal with the puppeteer. <laughs> Let me see if I can find something. Let's say that <laughs> there is a puppet here, a puppet here, and a puppet here. And I am the puppeteer. So I am coming by you with this puppet here, right? And I am hitting you with this puppet. And you are being really irritated by being hit by this puppet. Mm. 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 So what you do, you grab the puppet, right? And throw it down. Okay. Now I have this puppet now, right? <laughs> so I am still hitting you, right? Mm. Mm, mm. So what you do, you take this puppet and you destroy this puppet. Okay, I go to another puppet. Man, I pray that this makes sense. Why are you attacking the puppets for? There are many people that are not serving God. So demons have so many puppets to use. So why are you attacking puppets for? Why are you trying to fight back against puppets when the puppets are not your problem? It is the demons that are your problem. So what use is it to attack puppets? Think about that. What you do when someone is getting on your nerves and stuff like that or bothering you, you may change your job and then you find out that people are doing the same things to you. Then let's say that you go to a church and someone made you mad at church. So you decide to go to a different church and you find out someone is making you mad there. Look. You don't fight against the puppets. You don't deal with puppets. You fight against the demon. This is why I tell people, now I am going to another point now. This is why I tell people, don't debate and argue with people. For what? They are puppets. When when an atheist comes to me and say that they don't believe in God, I'm like, okay. And I am not saying anything else to that person. Why should I? That person just told me that they don't believe in Jesus Christ. I have a YouTube channel that I teach about God and they may watch it and they may comment to me, hey, I don't believe in that fairy tale God. Okay. Why should I respond back? They are a puppet. If I want to do good toward that person, what I am going to do is what? Pray for that person. Because obviously, that demon has that person in so much control that they are not going to hear my words. So that means I have to do warfare against that demon that is controlling that person, right? There is no point wasting an hour or two hours. Well, you know, John 3 and 16 and John blah, blah, blah. This says that, this says that, no. I pray against those de those demons. That is the best thing to do. So if your mother, father, nephew, niece, cousin, co-workers, grandmother, grandfather, whoever is bothering you, you don't fight with them. You don't argue with them. Of course, it is okay to try to explain things out, but usually, if that does not work, you shut your mouth. 
and you pray to God for them. For instance, there is this one person that I have to come in contact with every so often and I told this person that they should not do this and that but this person <laughs> this person does not really listen to me if there is something that person wants to do they are going to do it even when they know that it is wrong so now i was foolish to try to speak to this person and go on and on with that person now what i do now and i have not been doing it as much but i need to increase it i pray for that person and while around that time period when i was praying for that person it was working but i was thinking hey since it is working now maybe i don't have to pray as hard for this person to change and when i stopped praying for this person guess what <laughs> that person started the same things over and over again my lord so consistently persistently constantly purposely continue to pray for those people never stop you can't stop even if you feel discouraged so i pray that this makes sense you do warfare against the demons i don't care if the person is a pastor bishop preacher minister does not matter the position just because you have a position in the church does not mean that you are not going to sin ever again usually those are like the main people who are sinning makes sense i really pray that it does god bless